Please like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. If we are not decided on what we were called upon to come here and discuss, let us adjourn and go home. And let us think again. If the majority of us are of the opinion that because we are leaders of the party, ours is the responsibility of eating and eating, eating and eating. without our coming to a stage of being too satisfied to eat no more, then let us not waste time to discuss what is before the conference. But as I said, we like numbers in the park. But the number is not necessarily important. We like people who can speak English to come to the delegates' conference. But they are not necessarily important. We like educated persons to be members of the party. But whether they are two or a thousand, the number is not important. What is important is the opinion of the member of the UPC. That member who has no bus fare to go to Jinja, to Mbale, to Soroti, to Lira, to Gulu, to Hoima, to Masindi, to Fort Portal, to Kabale, to Masaka, to Mubende, to Kampala. That is the most important person. He's too poor to come here. He's probably too ignorant to come here. But he is not too ignorant. to allow us to eat all when he lives in poverty and ignorance. <laughs> he has the power of a giant. He can remove each and every one of us So the first resolution I put before you is, are you ready you look behind, there are no kings. If you are not ready. We need not waste time. We adjourn, we'll call another conference. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to accept that we have all come here ready. 
not only to take the decisions, but also to implement those decisions. That I repeat. I think many of you are as much afraid of what is in front of us as I am. But let us move forward. Let me now, delegates, say that when I ask you as to whether you are ready, I am asking you to realize that we have been moving, that Uganda has been moving and changing since independence. And that time has now come for us to take further measures on this road to our objectives. But if you do feel that at this particular moment we should not take these measures, I do request you to say so. And let us continue with the tactics and dribblings and suspension of issues and decisions. I am ready. I have passed my resolution. And I do want to ask you in a particular position. I have therefore no further obligation to the party except patronage and paternalism. I ask you to reject tribalism. And of course, Tribalism is a kind of racialism. I do therefore ask you to reject racialism. Having done that, together with your acceptance of the constitution of the party, you have to ask yourself whether the party and for that matter Uganda is ready to take further measures of a revolutionary nature as a result of this conflict. I believe so. But I don't want any one of you to take what I say unless you believe that time is ready and that you yourself, you are also ready to march with the time. To those who are ready, I move the adoption of the new socialist policy. I move the adoption of the new socialist policy proposals set out in the draft resolution contained in the document entitled the Common Man's Charter.
And I, and I do urge the conference to take note of the government proposals for national service. <laughs> Comrades, the document entitled the Common Mass Charter contains a resolution, one resolution, which I now put before you to consider, and in my view, to adopt. But of course you are the supreme body. You are free to reject this document in its entire tautology. You are free to amend it drastically. And you are free to accept it as it is. This resolution, which is printed is the result of the conference we had in Kampala last year when the delegates conference passed a resolution on nation building urging the party and the government to examine ways and means for active involvement of all institutions, state and private, in joint endeavor with the party to achieve and serve a, a nation united and one. In last year's conference, the delegates agreed that nation building was the most important challenge facing the party. And the delegates wanted the party and the government to work out schemes that would enhance, would enhance nation building. In our interpretation, as officials elected by you, and now in the opinion of the Central Executive Committee and the National Council, we recommend to you that the Common Men's Charter, together with proposals for national service, are feasible initial steps that would enable Uganda to move in the manner that the delegates conference of last year wanted Uganda to move. This document has been translated in a number of languages and has been distributed throughout the country. It has been discussed all across the country, formally and informally.
the responsibility for the adoption of the Charter is not with me now. It is with you. You have just come from the people who are very much concerned with the terms of the Charter. The Central Executive and the National Council would value very much what you have to say about this chart. You are not here for a seminar for me to explain each and every chapter or article in the charter and in the national service proposal. You are here as delegates of the people. I emphasize those words. You are delegates of the people. You are not my delegates. You are not the delegates of the Central Executive Committee. You are not the delegates of the National Council. You are the delegates of the people. Speak. And speak now of what the people think about the Charter and the National Service proposals. Now, I draw your attention, comrades, to Article 1 of the Charter. Indeed, it's the only article about which I would wish to speak. Article 1, for ease of reference, I would wish to read out aloud says, we, that is you and me, we, the members of the annual delegates conference of the Uganda People's Congress, assembled on this 18th December 1969 in an emergency meeting in Kampala, being the body charged under the Constitution of the Uganda People's Congress with the responsibility to lay down the broad basic policy of the party and being conscious of our responsibility and of the fact that the government of the Republic of Uganda, district administrations, and urban authorities are currently run by our party and on policies and programs adopted by our party. And recognizing our responsibility to the people of Uganda as a whole and to the Association of Uganda Tanzania and Kenya in the East African community and to Uganda's membership of the Organization of African Unity do hereby adopt this charter for the realization of the real meaning of independence, namely that the resources of the country material and human be exploited for the benefit of all the people of Uganda in accordance not with Mengo principles, not with Lapirigo principles, not with Gonyasi principles, 
not with Kabazinga principles, not with London principles, not with Peking principles, not with American principles, not with New Delhi principles, but in accordance with the principles of socialism. Now, comrades, I want to give notice that at the appropriate stage, I will move an amendment to that article in order to include the UPC's association with Tano and UNIT in the Mulungushi Club. I want also to say at this stage that the party and indeed the government of Uganda do take very seriously Uganda's association with Kenya and Tanzania in the East African community. There was a time when the suggestion and indeed the proposal was put to the effect that these three states should not only be in an association of an informal nature, but that they should have one government a federal government. That day came, but it hasn't passed, at least in so far as this party is concerned. It is important to say at this stage once more that the Uganda People's Congress has not rejected the East African Federation. It is important also to realize that at the time when a strong East African Federation was being considered we of the three states in East Africa had either a federal constitution here or a quasi-federal constitution here. And therefore our contribution was not likely to be of the nature that Kenya and Tanzania probably were able to give. But the spirit has always been with this party up to this day. And if any further assurance is desired, if any further assurance is desired, it would perhaps be too much for me to say that Uganda is ready. But if that is what is desired by East Africa, any day from tomorrow, Uganda will not be found wanting. Yeah. And if that day were to come, our contribution, the contribution which we were able to give in 1964, will be chicken feet. We are now in a position to give greater contribution than we were in 1964. In the meantime, we take the community, the East African community, very seriously. We want it to succeed. 
we want all the institutions of the community to function smoothly. We want the ministers at Arusha to look to East Africa as a whole and from this all on your behalf comrades I direct Dr. Majuko whenever he is in Arusha and Ali Kiseka whenever he is in Arusha or serving the interests of the community to think of East Africa and not of Uganda or Kampala or Entebbe. From this all, likewise, we direct our members of the East African Legislative Assembly to consider legislation and matters coming before them for the good of East Africa. For we realize that the good of East Africa cannot possibly be for the bad of Uganda. We direct once more also from this hall all those citizens of Uganda who are serving in various capacities in the community to realize that their service is to East Africa and that they should not look back that Uganda is the country they have to serve. Serve East Africa thereby you will serve Uganda better and with honor.